Hey, it's Mike here, and today I figured I'd weigh in on long-term vegan and trans YouTuber Blair White quitting veganism after 10 years. I wasn't sure if I was gonna touch on this topic, but then I figured I'll do a little poll, and 80% of you said, yes, do it, so here we are. In terms of her original video, there have been several responses like those by Happy Healthy Vegan and Vegan Gains with particularly good points about supplementing and vitamins and stuff like that. But since then, there's been a live stream with more information coming out that I wanna touch on in particular. And she's definitely feeling pretty attacked at this point, so I wanna say by no means am I trying to belittle or attack her, but she's sort of possibly creating some new myths around vegans and supplementation in particular. And when we're already dealing with convincing people that they can get enough protein on a vegan diet, I think we need to put them up against the science. Okay, lightning round recap for those who haven't been following this at all. Blair originally went vegan 10 years ago. From age 14 to now 24. Because she didn't like how animals were treated and she wanted to lose weight, she very successfully lost all that weight. And it worked. I actually lost a lot of weight very quickly upon going vegan. And things went well up until pretty recently where she had trouble getting out of bed and felt lightheaded and things like that. It's like, I can't get out of bed. I have no energy to even move my body. She then went to the doctor and found out that she had some deficiencies, particularly the ones she mentioned were vitamin D and B12. Now there are a few pretty important points for vegans here generally, and then we'll address her situation particularly. In terms of B12, probably the most recent study we have on the topic from Switzerland showed that in terms of B12 status, there was no statistically significant higher level of B12 deficiency in vegans than there was in omnivores. They were the same. And as for the case of vitamin D deficiencies, this is not some magic vegan thing from this study quote. The overall prevalence rate of vitamin D deficiency was 41.6%, which is almost half of adults. Now to Blair's situation, she said that she didn't wanna take any more pills because she was already taking about six as a transgender woman. So I'm taking all these supplements on top of taking six pills a day just for my hormone levels and I'm like, okay. And the particular reason was that she wanted to avoid liver damage, which I will definitely get to in a second. Something has to give. I am not going to destroy my liver taking a dozen pills every single day. But in terms of most people's responses, they have been, hey, you can just take fortified foods. You don't have to be popping any pills. Now soon you'll learn why this line of reasoning would absolutely not work on Blair, but I still wanna add a couple points to this. First being a lot of fortified plant milks have both vitamin B12 and D added to them. So Delicious, which is a widely available brand of plant milks, has about 50% of your daily needs of B12 and 30% of your daily needs of vitamin D in just one cup, which is a pretty small amount. And because they add vitamin D to virtually all cow's milk in the US, that is where people are relying on getting it in animal products. This is really not any different. In fact, from this study, quote, in the USA, enhanced foods have been found to contribute approximately 80% of total vitamin D intake. So nothing unique in the case of vegans. And finally, for virtually any type of supplementation, you can DIY your fortification by throwing it in your smoothie and blending it or crunching it up and adding it into bulk foods like oatmeal. And you know I love the vitamin D mushrooms if they're available to you. It's a cool way to go. And from this study, it was able to raise people out of vitamin D deficiency. So you never have to take a pill to get these nutrients, but taking a pill is really not that big of a deal. But none of those things I just said about fortification or other people just said are gonna have any effect on her because according to her, she was eating fortified foods the entire time she was vegan. What? And there is more to this, but first here is her live stream with vegan YouTuber Ask Yourself. I didn't go longer than like a week, the entirety of my vegan run of 10 years without eating fortified food that advertised that it had B12 and vitamin D and all this shit. Like I was constantly eating fortified foods. And then when she found out she was deficient, supplemented for several months and the supplements just didn't work on her. Right, and like I said, I attempted that for quite a while. I attempted that for probably three or four months um, with no change to the health issues I was experiencing. I'm supplementing and those issues are still like, if not even worse, they're still there. Okay. Then obviously the supplementation did not work. So after months of supplementing on a vegan diet and still feeling crappy, she started eating meat and other animal products and voila, magically everything was great. So the doctor gave me two options. Don't be vegan or supplement. I tried the first option, didn't work. Try the second option, it worked and I feel great. I find this a little bit inconsistent, especially in the realm of vitamin D, where she was likely supplementing for several months a somewhat higher level of vitamin D, and then taking supplements via cow's milk in a smaller amount just magically worked. And in terms of B12, increasing your status via supplements is wildly more effective than eating it from meat. B12 is B12, it comes from bacteria. 
Three ounces of meat has 0.5 micrograms of B12, and the average person might be getting around five micrograms per day. So the supplements that you're taking are probably between 10 and 200 times as much B12 as you would be getting in animal products. So what do they recommend for everybody over 50 when they might not be able to absorb as much B12 from meat and other animal products? They recommend supplementation for everyone over 50. And just to emphasize how yes, B12 supplements do work from this study, they took 40 people who were B12 deficient and they gave them B12 supplements and by 10 days on average, everybody was out of deficiency. Two important things here, half of those people were only taking 50 micrograms per day and that's what the study was showing that you don't actually need to take a ton. And they also measured B12 metabolism to make sure this was actually being utilized and it was. So yeah, there is a reason that my B12 levels and Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan, as he showed in his video, are higher than the average omnivore B12 levels. And when I got that taken, I didn't even think that I was supplementing regularly enough, and I've been vegan for seven years, so it's very unlikely that it is recirculating B12. So supplementing for 10 days takes people out of deficiency. Maybe if you're really deficient, it might take a few weeks, but she was claiming three to four months. And some people have pointed out that there was some interesting body language here, maybe a tell. What do you think? Right, and like I said, I attempted that for quite a while. I attempted that for probably three or four months um, with no change to the health issues I was experiencing. Oh, okay. To the health issues I was experiencing. Uh, okay. There was sort of a distinct fiddling and an eye wander and a lip bite, but I would like to think that she was not lying and I really don't think it matters either way because she said she never got tested anyway because she didn't feel better. Uh, okay, so did you actually go back and make sure that you had your levels proper? Like go back a second time and get my levels checked? No, I did not because all the problems were still there. And it matters even less because as she says here, the kind of obvious conclusion would be that you didn't actually address the issues properly. I, I very well may not have been giving myself the proper dose of, of supplementation um, when I was doing that. So I think we've reached two possible scenarios here. And one is that she was supplementing so spottily that it never got her levels back up or fixed anything. And that's why she kept feeling bad. Or number two, that the way she felt may have not actually had to do with her levels. And from what I gathered, her response to the possibility of number one, that she wasn't supplementing regularly enough is that it just shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that difficult to get your supplementation on lock. And that if it is, then the diet is flawed. But you didn't actually make sure that you're eating them in the right quantity to But eat how practical is it to expect people to go vegan and then have to deal with like all this shit to make sure that they're well like they're fine. Like to talk you. about like, well just seek a nutritionist and do this and do that. It's like some people I'm not one of them but some people like don't have the money to pay for supplements once a week. My first response to that would be no matter what diet it is, you're gonna have to learn where you get certain nutrients from certain foods. People are obsessed with getting enough cow's milk for calcium and getting enough meat for protein. I joke about it being carnorexia nervosa, the compulsive need to have meat at every meal. That is ridiculous. And in terms of a vegan diet being flawed, first of all, supplements are not dominating vegans' lives. And the most important thing possibly here, zooming out, is that the other diet that most people are eating is flawed. If we look at the data, we see 15% lower mortality in vegans, which should be enough for her. And we have 78% lower diabetes, 15% lower cancer rates, the average normal BMI, and so on. So she's switching back to a diet that puts her at an increased risk of chronic diseases. It's sort of like chopping off your legs so you're lighter and you can run faster. That's a really bad analogy, but I think you get it. So I have to disagree with what Blair says. It's not a matter of ethically choosing between saving animals and saving yourself. You can do both. And now I wanna to touch on the supplementation can lead to liver damage idea, which I think people have really covered in other videos in terms of that it is not a risk and obviously excess B12 is peed out. You've probably heard that before and it's not a risk at all for vitamin D deficiency and liver damage. But I wanna mention that it's more likely that she got this concern from her doctor in terms of taking her pills to be trans. And I think it's most important here from another vegan trans woman here in this situation. And so from the words of Ruth Ruthless, quote, I personally take my estrogen as a cream to avoid potential liver damage, even though my endocrinologist says I don't have to since I don't drink alcohol and don't smoke. If she is so worried about potential liver damage, she can use a cream too. And she goes on to say that there's no reason that you can't be vegan and trans. To. And quickly, I want to say this is a little reminiscent of Lier Keith's story where she was vegan for a long period of time and then she had some meat or some animal products and all of a sudden every cell in her body was vibrating in perfect harmony. 
No. Because it's impossible to just raise your nutrient status that fast, I would say it's much more likely that she was doing spotty supplementation that was raising her status slowly, you know, kept going up until she was feeling almost better and then switched her diet around the same time and was just like, oh, now I feel fine. But this sort of emotional response brings me to the real reason I think that she quit being vegan. Obviously nutrients played a role, but I think it comes down largely to social and political reasons, believe it or not. Blair White is a conservative personality and conservatives in general are less likely to be vegan. I think we all know that and their community is less accepting of vegans in my personal experience. Conservatives who watch this, absolutely feel free to share your opinion below. But in terms of cultural resistance, I would equate being a conservative vegan today roughly to being a liberal vegan 15 years ago. In her original video, she talked about the difficulty of going out to eat when you're the only vegan and that social pressure not wanting to be the center of attention. I hate being the center of attention. And when you're the only vegan in a group of friends or in your family or in a group setting or a business dinner or anything, you are the center of attention because you have to say, I'm vegan so we can't go to that restaurant. Where's the vegan menu? It's just not my gig. To me, this is the real reason she is quitting veganism because we are social tribal creatures and if you are varying from the behavior of your tribe you're going to feel a lot of pressure to conform as she said she's burnt out and i don't think that burning out after 10 years of being vegan is a result of the diet itself it's a result of the people that she is around and this is why I think there are a lot of specific points about her supplement reasoning that just don't make any sense. There are some inconsistencies there, and that's because it was more of a post hoc or an after the fact explanation for why she didn't want to be vegan anymore, as opposed to the actual core reason. Just a theory, just my theory. In conclusion, nutrients like these are becoming less and less of a problem on a vegan diet. Again, the B12 issue is thankfully going away and D is just a widespread issue for everybody. And the best way to raise your status of these things is to supplement. There is no way that a couple meals of animal products magically raised her status faster than three or four months of supplementation. It's impossible. Now, I don't think Blair is gonna go back to being vegan because of her social circle, but if she was open to it, I would say take the supplements, not in pill form, do a super quick spray like Ryan did in his video. And you're not gonna get any liver damage from this. I just do this. For about a month or six weeks and then go back and get your blood tested. And if your levels are still low, I'll pay you $200. Because supplements do work. And then after that period, she could simply integrate fortified foods into her diet on a regular basis and problem solved. And really, I just don't wanna see another Nick Nikocado avocado here where a few months later after quitting veganism, it's a, ah, uh, yeah, I did gain a lot of weight video and just not looking better from the outside in at least. Okay, so Joey and I filmed a video recently where I ate bacon for the first time in my life because even before I was vegan, I never tried bacon. Our shekels, making ethical choices when you can equals eating bacon on YouTube for views and ad money. Girl, here's the thing. I can do the f I want, how about that? And with the money you just gave, I'm gonna buy more bacon, how about that? All right, so that's it for today. Let me know down below what your thoughts on this are and definitely be respectful. And just in case you're wondering, this uh, House Vegan Protector of Animals shirt is from my friends, Those Annoying Vegans. I'll link that in the description below. All right, thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.